Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and what you just saw was me attempting to put in a solution to my Annie problems that was based off of a comment from one of you guys, uh, Team Bad Engineering Choices, which love that name, uh, suggested that I try and move the skids for Annie further forwards to try and get a bit of a counter, uh, cantilever type system going where more weight was being pushed back towards the back wheels. And I quite liked that idea, so I did indeed put in a little system that pushed the contact point forwards. This is about as far forwards as I want to go with this system because where this wheel currently stops is at the 10 mil mark out from the actual uh, attachment points, which means it's exactly where the armor stops. So nothing was sticking out further past the armor, which was one of the big things I wanted because that keeps Annie's reach exactly as it is. And look, it kind of worked. It's uh, this actual setup that's on the robot now and the one you saw just driving around there, which did mostly work, but not fully work isn't actually the setup that I put in in the time lapse uh, because this one is a separate part printed that was just a little bit longer to kind of force Annie to tilt back just a little bit more. I think these wheels are actually slightly bigger than what I've got in CAD because they seem to be, um, yeah, just out a little bit in a lot of different ways. So Annie's currently leaning a little bit forwards and the motor shafts are bent out slightly. So I think they're actually not quite in the right space. Uh, anyway, that is that, unfortunately. I don't really want to push these out too much further, which means that even though we did get some gain there and we stopped crab walking, we did actually manage to drive properly for the first time in a while. Uh, yeah, that's about as far as I'm gonna go with this. Instead, I have brand new printed parts, which are to push the wheel further forwards. Again, not sticking out further than the 10 mil thick armor panel that I'm gonna put on the front of Annie. There we go, that worked quite well. Now, uh, some of you may have realized that these wheels aren't as far forwards as they possibly could be. They could be another kind of 10 to 15 mil more forwards, but as they currently stand, uh, they will actually sit behind 10 mil front armor. Only just, like these edges of these wheels are probably like one or two mil behind 10 mil thick front armor. Uh, and so they are still kind of in the way a little bit. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this problem. Uh, yeah, I might, it might end up being that we run 10 mil front armor on Annie and also 10 mil back armor. And then when I'm versing a big horizontal, I'll run the back armor into them uh, and not the front armor, maybe. Uh, we'll see, I haven't, I haven't really thought too far ahead on that one. But the drive system works really well with these um, front wheel drive system. The only thing I don't like about doing it this way is it's gonna mean that I can't self write anymore. At least not like pushing off a wall or something because the old version of Annie with the wheels at the back and heavy motors at the back was able to like upside down drive off a wall and kind of flip back over and would be okay. In this version, I'm just gonna have to stay upside down and keep hitting things and hope that the gyro forces and the forces out of hits are enough to force me back over onto the wheels. Uh, anyway, I think we're gonna run any like this for the time being. We'll see how all of this goes. And yeah, if it goes poorly in the next meet, whenever that next meet actually happens to be, uh, we will obviously change back and do something different. But for now, let's cut some pieces.
Okay, so that didn't quite go the way I wanted it to. Uh, these pieces are kind of blue, really, at the end of the day. I was going for a, this type of color, purple or like royal deep purple. And what I've ended up with is something that's a little bit more blue. I mean, it's not super blue. It is kind of uh, like a deep purple blue but it's still more blue than this. And I think that's because I put too much dye in. I put uh, more dye than I recommended in my HDP dyeing video. Uh, so it's not the most blue thing, like this is blue and that's a kind of, yeah, it, like I said, it's a deep purple, but it's just not what I was going for. The really annoying thing is some of the um, 3D printed standoffs that I used, which these are really hard to see, but these came out more the deep purple color that I was looking for, which these are in nylon, I believe. Um, whereas, yeah, these are HTPE. So I'm really, really quite confused as to how this all happened. Like I said, I didn't put too much dye in, but it shouldn't have gone blue, I wouldn't have thought. Um, anyway, that uh, the problems don't stop there. A lot of these pieces are totally okay, but our base plate not totally okay uh, to the point where like if I put the base plate on this or the back plate on this you can see that we've actually got warping where the the base plate is warped at this corner and at that corner and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that I've tried to kind of like hand bend this back into place but it doesn't seem to want to stay anymore uh, heat might do it but heat kind of got me into this position in the first place Realistically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this whole thing back together and uh, yeah, if it's not flat and it doesn't work, then I don't know, I'll have to uh, ask you guys to leave me a comment and tell me what you reckon I need to do about fixing this base plate or if I need to just abandon uh, this particular base plate and cut a brand new one. Anyway, let's um, get Annie back together. And there we go. She's actually come out pretty well uh, out of all of this. I'm actually fairly happy with everything. The only thing I will say is putting Annie back together, I did realize, and actually you can kind of see it here, that the side walls are bending outwards. I think that's because the base is bent. And even though I kind of forced it back into position with all these screws, it does force the side walls out just a little bit. And realistically, that may have been the problem I was facing uh, with the wheels not touching the ground, with everything all the way back here and the side walls bending and not being like perfectly straight up and down, it could have been messing with the balance of everything and the balance of where all of my stuff actually sat, which that's given me something to think about and it might be another version of Annie uh, before we even fight her again because I might redo the wall sectioning so that it's not as reliant on the base plate being flat because apparently that's a thing that I'm struggling with at this point in time. Uh, the good thing about the front wheel drive system though is that there is a bolt holding the face plate into the actual weapon mount which shores that up at the front which means that the wheels are going to be straight which is really really good. Uh, of course there is one thing that we're missing right now so uh, let's get that all sorted out because we can't have Annie without a face. That's just, that's just not right. So we're gonna uh, get her all set back up again. We're gonna use some foam tape as usual. Get a, gotta have the shock mounted googly eyes. It's the, uh, the best type of armor you can have on a combat robot. And there we go, she's back, back again. And I am, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty happy about this. The only thing I will say is of course that the wheels being at the front now are a little bit more exposed than they were previously, but that, well, that might be okay. We'll see, we'll have to uh, put Annie into some combat and uh, work it all out. Anyway, I hope you have all enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.